Good. So I just wanted to give a quick background of who am I. Um, I'm selling productized services for about 15 years now, uh, not Drupal. I've been in other businesses, used to be uh, MSDN RD uh, or Microsoft Regional Director for Microsoft for about five, four, four years. Uh, did a lot of evangelizing out there and hence a lot of roadshows, talking talk to many customers, demoing a lot of stuff. Um, I co-founded a company uh, which was primarily uh, mobile first using Drupal in the background. That's where I got introduced to Drupal uh, about four years, five years ago. Uh, that's where we started off. Um, currently working and co-founding Fiji Solutions. Uh, we are a 100 people shop, 30 yard focus on Drupal and uh, have San Jose as well as um, India offices out there. A quick point, just wanted to cover um, what are topics which we're going to cover here. Um, productized services, uh, what is required to create a productized services, uh, how can it be structured, um, can you put a price to it, or, or how do you market a productized services? Because all of these are sort of cascading effect. If you don't do the first, you won't be able to do the last. Um, and before we move a uh, little ahead, I just wanted to give a quick idea behind where are we going with this. Um, so whatever we can do well, there are three things. Right? So what we do well, what we want to do, and what we are paid to do. Um, they are all intersected at a certain point. And we have to adjust, uh, if, if all three points join together, obviously uh, we're making a lot of money there. Um, but I'm not sure if everybody is intersecting at all three angles out there. Um, so there are going to be gaps where predicting revenue is always be, going to be a challenge if you're a services only company. Uh, if you're a products only company, you don't know what, how do I make more money by doing a product and a service com services company. So you're kind of in a dilemma of if, if you've been in the Drupal business for a long, how many, uh, how much can you really go and anticipate for the next three, four years I'm going to make this much amount of money? Um, I don't think so. <coughs> so to avoid or, or sort of to get out of this uh, is how you, you can actually work on how do you productize a service. Um, so why productize a service? Please raise your hand if you've been through this scenario. Uh, five phone calls you've had with a prospect, uh, two meetings in person that is, uh, three proposal rewrites because he's going through a lot of uh, definition of how things work and so on and so forth. Uh, you've spent close to 65 man hours and you've not been able to sign the deal. Um, how many of us have been through that process? Um, the idea essentially behind this is um, how do I increase my predictability in terms of revenue because that's going to be the bottom line for the company which I'm driving or the employees which are going to be along with me who are planning to scale with me but I don't know how do I project this over a number of years. Um, how do you differentiate against competition? Um, so for us being a offshore vendor, if I go and sell hourly basis consulting, there are tons of those guys already available. Um, if I can offer a specific off, uh, offering and say, if your customer's having this particular problem, I can go and solve, because I've already defined those specs. Um, so I don't have to go and tell them, uh, hey, Mr. Customer, I, I, I know what, you do, what you're going through. I have solved these problems in the past. Here is how I'm going to do it. <coughs> Focus on one problem, uh, and I'll talk about how do you short, sort of shortlist on those problems and, and with one solution. Um, sell value, not just time. Most of us in the Drupal business have been actually selling you know, hourly basis consulting. Um, and of course, some of you have also been adding value to your customers, but can you really maximize out of by selling value and not just by the time, so that's the perspective here. Create an asset, um, who knows, after a few years, you may be able to sell that asset and make more money out of it. Um, maybe some other company comes by and says, looks like 
this, this guy has this tool or this company has this tool which can add significant value to my revenue. Just go ahead and buy that. So that might be an additional revenue angle if, if you are thinking about that, which in an hourly consulting, that's unlikely to happen. That. Um, sell it to focus groups, uh, better chance of success. So I'll, I'll talk about how do you hone on uh, onto a particular group and then uh, sell that, those kind of approaches. Um, so what is required to create a productized service? Um, basically list all the projects which you have done, get them into a single bucket, and then start filtering what is common between all these projects. Um, and I'll talk, you, talk about some of our examples which we have been through. Um, I'm sure you know, we can talk about some of yours as well. Identify who's your buyer, uh, who's the decision maker, who's gonna sign the check, who's gonna approve the budget, who, who are all these guys, um, and why are those required, I'll talk about that. Uh, and then the time spent on the proposals, how much, uh, how much of an effort have you actually put in to build those proposals, and winning the deals, and of course, executing those projects as well. And, and the last, which is the most important part, is you need to be ready to invest if you are building a productized service. And one of the diagrams which I'm going to show uh, later that will probably sort of describe why should that be happen. Um, so productized service, you have features fixed of a particular solution. You have you put a price to it. Uh, you have prospects identified or the personas which I'm talking about, and then you go ahead and create a productized service. So how can it be structured? Um, you arrive at a baseline by gathering all projects as I was talking about, figure out what are the common elements, what is the common value which you are delivering it to the customer. Is there a particular value which the customer is taking you for granted versus it's a perceived value. So you know there are two different aspects which you have to think about. And it's an important element when you're trying to create your own productized service. Um, identify an ideal client or a total accessible market. That's sort of marketing jargon from an accessibility perspective. Um, just wanted to uh, quickly ask who, who understands TAM, who doesn't understand TAM, Okay, um, so the idea behind the total accessible market is if you've figured out, let's say, within healthcare companies, if, if your productized service is focused on, uh, on a particular healthcare segment, within healthcare segment, which are the companies which are likely to buy your productized service? Um, and that would be the segment or the market size which you are going to attack. And within that, how many people are likely to buy? So you sort of drive down into, or zone down into your sellable market, and then go approach them with specific offerings which you're coming out with. How do you price it? Because that's also an important element. Um, because if somebody is buying a product, uh, the first question he's, he or she is going to ask is, what's the price of the product? And and Def deriving a price is always going to be a challenge uh, because you don't have a baseline there. There is nobody else who has a ready-to-use product, or even if they have, uh, you obviously would want to undercut or over-add depending upon how your uh, product or service actually is um, perceived by your prospect. So those are some of the aspects like you either derive it by how much cost are you incurring to build that product and then add margins onto that and then distribute that across your customers, add maybe a little bit of um, uh, margins again on top of that and that could be one approach. The other approach is if you have already sold these solutions, uh, may not be productized solutions, um, what's the total value of the project or an average value of the project you know, that could also be a consideration for putting a price to your product or service. Pricing a product or service, we, we've already covered. The last part is about the marketing aspect. I just want to do a quick check on the timing. Um, when you are trying to approach your prospects, um, 
in, in terms of trying to sell this service, um, one product can actually be applied to multiple prospects, but the language which they understand would always be different. So you have to create sort of you know, messages which is coming down to the same solution, but uh, the way it is perceived or the way the prospect understands is always going to be different. So you have to create those similar sounding messages. Um, so what I'm referring here is create different versions of the problem. So if the problem is, uh, let, let me take that as an example. Let's say a healthcare company is trying to build a, a patient intake farm. Um, now the farms, the fields within the farms are pretty much the same for almost all hospitals and clinics. Uh, but the way the CIO perceives his problem versus the CTO or the CMO, the chief medical officer, perceives that problem is totally different. So you need to have a separate message for all these personas and then reach out to those guys. So that's something which you can do. Um, position as a problem solver, so the questions would always go as, hey, do you want to improve your patient's experience? You know, it's a very broad level question. Uh, but the ultimate goal is for them to create those patient intake forms. Whenever that patient walks in, he signs up on that particular tab, and that's the product which you would essentially go and sell to all the hospitals. Um, I wanted to spend a lot of time on the marketing aspect, but that will be a whole lot of different session altogether on how do you pick up a product and start market, marketing it out to different prospects. Uh, this is something which you should not do, uh, is the cartoon which I'm trying to depict out here. Um, the point where I was referring to about investments, um, if you are a pay by hour service, which is this line, if, and assuming you have recurring business coming in and you know that for months or years together, this customer is going to, I can scale my business along with this, this customer or these customers. That's the growth which you have you know, built a successful services company. Uh, but if you are trying to create a productized service, you are bound to invest and hence not make a lot of money initially. But there, there is going to be an inflection point over a period of time where you actually make more money then what your pay by, serve, pay by hour service is going to make. Having said that, there is always obviously a flip side uh, on both sides. This can be the straight line, and if your product side, product side service fails, you're essentially not making enough money as you would have been uh, in just by being a, doing a consulting work. So you have to sort of think about both aspects. Um, so sort of a word of caution before you figure that it's going to be very easy, it's not. Um, and I'll talk about what's not great about that. Uh, if you already sold this idea to some of your clients, they may not like that. Um, that you have now created a service offering which has boundary around it because you've actually milked them sort of um, already from the customer. So that's not, you know, they may not like that. Um, it requires a lot of work uh, because you're defining a feature, uh, you're setting up things, uh, you're making sure that, uh, you know, you're, you're talking to prospects, figuring out what feature works for them, what doesn't, and so on and so forth. Uh, so that's something which you have to sort of create that, uh, and it can't be done overnight. With a lot of pe people perceive it can be, but it's not. Package it uh, to convey great value and be profitable. Um, so it's, it's sort of a dilemma a lot of times when you're talking to multiple prospects and customers with this, you know, bring the value and, and also be profitable. So that's something which you have to think about. There are two approaches which you can actually take or think. Um, we've actually taken both and I want to talk about that. Um, there's an inside-out approach where a bunch of our customers had multiple websites, uh, media companies very specifically, 
where uh, they had a Drupal website, they had a WordPress website, they had a ROR or Ruby-based websites. And they had two people for each of these sites maintaining, which the cost of that you know, was significantly high. Can I create a overarching solution which I can manage all three of them, uh, all, all three web properties, and they were acquiring two more under one single umbrella? Um, so we call it uh, the central admin panel, and that's the solution uh, which we've created, which is live right now, uh, sort of 70 to 80 percent. It's already there. Why? Because the backend solution is pretty much the same. It's just they, you know, fetch an API from different websites and start throwing in from an asset management, user management perspective. The reason why it's not 100% is every customer requires a different UI and says, uh, you know, it, the, the way it's managed internally within my system, it should give the same look and feel so that my admin guys are not running around and there's no extra training required. So that's the aspect where it's 70 to 80% frozen, and the rest, 20 to 30%, is where we go ahead and define the UI, or the customer goes and defines the UI. So it depends upon how big the shop is and it's addressed accordingly. So we figured who's the guy we should, it's supposed to sell, what are the features, uh, what is the price, and I've purposely not put a price here. Um, so that's, that's an inside out approach because we've sub built those solutions already for multiple of our customers. We know what goes into this, create an overarching solution, fixed features in terms of users, uh, what properties are we looking for and so on and so forth, is an inside out approach. An outside in approach is where we knew that there's a problem in the industry and can a distro or a product solve that problem? And who are the likely candidates to whom we can sell this? And can it be a feature fixed? Um, you know, challenges uh, around patient intake forms most of the time is, hey, can I go integrate with EHRs? Um, I, how, how many people are in healthcare domain operating out here? Two, three. Um, so the, maybe I should skip this part. But the idea is, uh, the first question they're likely to ask is, can it integrate with my system? And if yes, how easy is it or how difficult is it going to be? 100% frozen uh, in terms of features because we know what the farms are most of the times defined by CMS. It's a central body for healthcare regulations. So we've known that those are pretty much fixed. And hence, we went ahead and created a distro, which is free, um, available on D7. D8 is going to be released this week, by end of this week. Um, so those distros are already in. Now, how do we make money out of this? Because distro is free. Um, any integration work, that's where we come in, because we've been doing integration for four years now. And hence, that's the value we bring and the revenue which we make out of that. So. Um, some of our pro estimation tools, um, sorry, some of our productized services, so we have a estimation and sprint automation tool. Um, essentially, every shop has a lot of Excel sheets, or maybe have an internal tool to do estimation for projects. Um, we've learned from over the years how difficult or challenging from a complexity creation could be or resource allocation could be there is a demand from the customer most of the time, hey, can you share the whole sprint plan with me or a, a, you know, a generic plan before you even start executing the project or, or get my buy-in on that? So we've created that automation tool. Um, then the patient intake form I talked about, uh, we also attempted a D6 to D7 migration, but uh, we sort of thought that there's not enough demand and. It's sort of shelved right now. It's still on, but we're not aggressively talking about that. Uh, Multi-site, multi-app publishing framework. So we've worked with large publishing companies. Uh, they've had issues where I need to create a site and a mobile app within two weeks. Now, site, somebody understands, but mobile app within two weeks, it's going to be a challenge, especially every customer needs a new 
UI or hey, I want iOS, but I don't want Android, or I want both, or I just want Android, depending upon what they're looking for. So we created a framework which would spin off this website and the mobile app within two days. Um, dump in the framework, <coughs> capture all the data which is there, spin it out. The only challenge with um, iOS is it'll take another two weeks to get approval from Apple. Um, apart from that, that's something uh, which is fairly fixable in terms of creating this framework and central admin panel I talked about. Um, quickly to summarize, um, try and standardize uh, your processes, tools, methodology. Uh, it, if you have to create a, a productized service, um, if you want to deliver value, you have to you know, have to make sure that there are, you're focusing on a limited amount of customers, but you maximize your revenue. That's the good part. Um, and then promote and sell. Um, figure out what your total accessible market is. Um, also predict your revenue. Uh, or you can predict your revenue based on, hey, I know out of my 1,000 TAMs, when I say TAMs as in my 1,000 prospects in the total accessible market, I am able to sell it to 10 and likely to replicate this to another 5 or 10, 20. And that's how you can actually predict your revenue versus the services which you have been selling. So those are some of the aspects. Um, these are some of, uh, so I'm, I'm done with my sort of discussion here, open to answer any questions. Um, had to, well, I'm good on time. Uh, I think I have more five minutes to go. Um, any questions? Uh, anybody already thinking about prioritizing your service, facing a particular challenge? Yeah, well, we actually were looking at methodologies. So we actually um, are building um, foundation, like for a grant management system for foundations, and we had already some clients on a Drupal 6 version of it. Mm -hmm. And then our clients agreed to pay us to bring it to Drupal 8. And then we had them pay us over three years. They have to pay us like maybe like 50 grand a year to like have the whole new thing in Drupal 8. And then they're also kind of in the model. So they know we're going to try to sell it to other people. And then they get a, a small cut mm -hmm. if we sell it to other people because they can also help us sell it to other people because right. they already in the market right so now we're just really trying to figure out the so we we're lucky that we kind of had somebody to pay f to create the product Perfect. but now we have to figure out how to price it and market it and sell it and I guess one of our biggest problems is we tend to we have a lot of developers and like we don't really have you know people with experience like selling products and like getting that out there so that's what we're trying to figure out now yeah, I, I think uh, we've had a similar, I won't say challenge, but a business proposal out here. And the way we figured out was that if our customer can sell on our behalf, um, because as you said, they would likely to reach out to that prospect base is much better. Uh, so let them do the front end part and then you do the back end part. Um, that is one approach and it's sort of working for us in where we are a professional services partner for the product and they are the selling partner for the product. So it's a buy-in or a skin in the game for both of them. Any other questions? Um, it's sort of, it might be a two-part question. Um, what's your take on uh, creating a minimum viable product prototype first? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's always a good idea. Uh, that's how we, we've been going about it. Okay. So the patient intake form is exactly a MVP. Um, it's not a full-fledged product because we knew that it is always going to be a challenge when people deploy it in their location because it's a distro. But then the next step is always going to be, hey, can you integrate with Epic? Or can you integrate with so-and-so EHR or my billing applications? And that's why we've toned down the whole scenario down to, okay, we'll just give you forms. That's an MVP. And then you can take it further if you want to. Okay. That's a good approach. I see, because I don't know if you do any customer discovery, if this is a lean startup, 
And if so, do you do the MVP before or after you interview your customers? So that is for when you build product for a startup company. Um, it's not a product I service per se. Okay. Uh, it, it's a product where you know your feature list is or wish list is this big, but you figure out that's the maximum number of people who are going to use and scale over a period of time. That's the feature list which you wouldn't want to create, and we do that for our healthcare business, by the way, uh, where a lot of customers come in and say, hey, can you build this wellness app for us, or can you build this population health management for us? They say, fair enough, what's your wish list? And then they come out with use cases and say, okay, uh, this will take two years. And say, no, no, we don't have that much time. <laughs> come it down to three months, four months, this is your MVP, reach out to your prospects, they might come back to you say, I need this feature and that feature, and then progress it into the next one. Good, thank you. Sure. Anybody else? No, oh, three minutes I have. Looks like, uh, sure. So I'm curious, um, my team's spent time building a product, a B2B e-commerce platform that hooks into an ERP, and we're having this problem where we're, we've released it for 12 customers. We kind of went through a lean process, and now we're getting new customers that are asking for features that are way more cumbersome and not valuable to prospects. Right. So how do you, what's your methodology for saying no to those customers and pushing them away? Well, I would say yes to them, uh, but yeah. it would be uh, additional custom job which needs to be done. Because if, if all these features are across common across most of your customers, then you may want to invest that and then distribute your cost, get more money in. Yeah. But if it's very specific requirement of a customer, yeah. then you say, okay, this is what comes out of the box. But anything apart from that, you're gonna be charged extra. So, so, you, so you say yes to everything? Not everything, yeah. uh, <laughs> where 90% of the times I said yes, yeah. uh, but sometimes I have to say no because mm -hmm. I know that the customer is not gonna go anywhere uh, because he's already using my platform. But I want to maintain that relationship with them and hence I would say, no, I can't do this. Maybe somebody else uh, I can find and say, can you go ahead and help him out? And just on top of that, do you um, open your system up and then allow outside vendors to perhaps be a partner to that customer? Maybe there's something my team can't do, but... So the patient intake form I talked about, yes. Uh -huh. uh, it's a distro, as I said. Anybody can deploy it and go ahead and expand if they require. Uh -huh. So in, in certain cases, yes. In certain cases, no. Gotcha. Thanks. Thanks. Sorry, Hilesh, we gotta okay. switch. Yep. Perfect. Very good. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you.